So let's say you just got started in astrophotography and all you have is your DSLR, a kit lens, and a tripod. In this video, we're going to go over how to take some astro photos with just that and an intervalometer. But what if you're also somewhere where it's not easy to get to some truly dark skies? We're gonna go over that as well in this video because where I'm at is a Bortle 5 area. So what is it that you need to do this? Of course, you're gonna need your DSLR. The one I'm using tonight is the Canon EOS Rebel T7i with the kit lens that came with it, which is an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. And it's also the one that my earlier videos were recorded with. You're also gonna need an intervalometer and this is just to help you fine tune the controls so that way you can tell it to take shot after shot after shot without actually touching the camera. Now, in the case of powering the DSLR, yes, you can use the batteries that come with it, but I highly recommend going with something like a USB dummy battery and then using something like this anchor battery. That way it lasts a little bit longer. It can get very annoying replacing your batteries constantly. So if you use a dummy battery and just hook it up to a bigger power source, you don't have to change batteries as often. Now, of course, I mentioned that this is with just the DSLR and the tripod, but if you have a star tracker, it is highly recommended to use one of those. That way you can keep the star sharp for longer and expose further than you can without. Now, of course, your location matters as well. You're gonna wanna get to the darkest possible place you can get to. Now, I know that's not easy for everybody. Some people live in areas of the world where it's hours away to get to somewhere actually dark, but just find the darkest near you that you can get to. Once you're at that location, you definitely wanna put something in the foreground just to create a little bit of interest. So your car, a tree, a building, anything really. But if you can't put something in the foreground, that's fine. You can still just practice anyway. Before it gets dark, you want to get some settings and just get a few things taken care of. That way you're pretty much ready to go. You can do this as it's getting dark. You don't have to do it as early as I am, but I'm, you know, trying to make sure you can see me here. Anyway, the first thing you definitely want to do is depending on the style of picture you want to take, if you're going for something like a Milky Way shot with this kit lens, you're going to want to zoom it out and set it to the widest it can go, so 18 millimeters in the case of this lens. If you want, say, more of a star field, go ahead and zoom in. Set it all the way up to 55 millimeters. The one thing to note about that is the more you zoom in, with just the tripod, the shorter your exposures are gonna be, which we'll go over those settings here in a second. The other thing you can do is go ahead and get ready by looking at an app like Stellarium or using the phone app, PhotoPills, that way you can find out where the Milky Way is gonna be after it gets dark. Then you can have your camera set up in just the right spot so that way as soon as it's go time, you don't have to do anything. Once you have the camera turned on and ready, the first thing you want to do is go in and set it to manual mode on the dial up top. Mine's already there. And then once you're in the interface, set it to bulb mode. You want it at bulb mode so that way the intervalometer can take over. With the way that most kit lenses are, you can control the focal ratio and just set it to the widest it can go. So in the case of this lens, it's 4.0. If you set it up to F22, it's gonna be ridiculously dark and you're not gonna see anything. And the last thing we can do in preparation is set the ISO to about 1600 or 3200. It doesn't matter which, that's just a starting point. Once you take a couple test shots, you might tweak it just a little bit. Another thing you're definitely gonna wanna do is if there is a switch on the lens for manual focus or autofocus, set it to manual focus. And the reason for that is if it's an autofocus, it's not gonna know what to focus on. It can't pinpoint even the stars as a focal point. So you'll have to put it into manual mode. The last thing to do, while it's still light enough to see without a flashlight, go ahead and just get the intervalometer plugged in. That way, it's already ready to roll. Once the intervalometer is plugged in, there are some settings that you're gonna need to set. And the first one is the self timer. And I recommend just setting that to like five to 10 seconds. That way you can set it down and the vibrations on the tripod will stop before you start taking any pictures. The next setting you'll need to set on the intervalometer is the bulb. Now this is the actual exposure length. Now there is a way to figure out how to get sharp stars and that's called the 500 rule. But the 500 rule has kind of been debunked just a little bit because following that you still get a little bit of streaky stars. Now that's fine if they're tiny streaks because once you put all the data together in processing, the stars can come out sharp. But the easy way to remember it is this equation here on screen. Or if you're using PhotoPills, you can go into the PhotoPills app and just input what you're using and it'll tell you exactly how long your exposures need to be. The other thing I wanna note is that if you did follow PhotoPills or just use the 500 rule and you have a little bit of streaking, don't worry about it. 
Even if you're just practicing, that's fine. Later on, as you progress and get into star tracking, you won't need to worry about the streaks at all after you use a tracker. But for now, if you get a little bit of streaks, don't worry about it. Don't zoom in and pixel peep either. If it's zoomed all the way out and you see the full image, it'll still look great. And I imagine that even if it is your first photo, you're gonna be excited about it when you're done with it. Now for my specific setup, somewhere around 15 seconds is perfect. So you wanna set the bulb to 15 seconds. The next thing is the interval. And the interval is something you're gonna need to do just to make sure that the intervalometer actually keeps time correctly. So what you wanna do is just set it for about two seconds longer than whatever your exposure time was. So in this case, it'll be 17 seconds. And then the number is how many number of frames you wanna take. When it comes to exposures like this, I recommend going at least 10 to 20 shots. That way it gives you plenty to work with and you still wanna do calibration frames afterwards, which we'll go over that here in a little bit. Now that our settings are set and we know where the Milky Way is gonna be or our intended object, if we're zooming in, all we have to do is wait for it to get dark. All right, so now that it's dark, we are now to the point where we can get things focused in. And my recommendation here is if you're somewhere that you can see a light way off in the distance, point your camera at that first and just get focused. That'll help you at least get close to the point where you're focused enough for your stars. Once you get focused enough that you can tell that it's a light and maybe a few other things nearby, go ahead and turn it towards a bright star. Now, unfortunately, focusing on a star, I can't record that, but it looks very much like it did with the lights but you wanna make it as small as possible. That way, when you actually take your pictures, the stars are pinpoint sharp. Now, when you turn it on a star to focus, you can turn your ISO up just a little bit, so that way you can just get your test shots out of the way very quickly. But once you get done with that, set it back down to that starting point so that way you can take your test shot. Now we're gonna focus on a star and because of the tripod I'm using, I can get it onto Neb pretty easily. So what I'm doing now is cranking the ISO up to the highest it can go just for this test shot. And with this test shot, you just wanna take it to five to 10 seconds. It doesn't need to be very long. The light has to come off for this, but now that I know where Deneb is in the picture, you can do the method where you zoom in on a certain area of the sky and just get real zoomed in there. And then again, make the star as small as possible. So we'll take another test shot. And I know you guys can't see right now, but I'm not the only one here at the observatory, so I can't do bright lights. Okay, and reviewing the shot. Stars look sharp. All right, cool. All right, now it's in focus and kind of directly behind me here is where the Milky Way is. And the horizon's real low because we're up on a hill, so I'm not even gonna bother with uh, putting any foreground in it. I'm just gonna point directly at the sky. All right, I have it aimed at the sky and I turned my ISO back down. So all the settings are where they need to be. Now I'm just gonna do a 15 second shot just to make sure I have the Milky Way where I want it in the shot. We'll go ahead and get that test shot done now. It's not exactly where I want it, so I'm gonna rotate just a little bit to the left. That's a little more like it, so I'll take it up just a little bit higher so that way that treetop doesn't show up. There we go, that's more along the lines of what I want. Okay, so now is the time to get the program running. However, one thing I'm gonna do is just rotate just a little bit to the right. That way I can get about 20 shots in and I don't have to readjust, okay? And this is the time where you turn the intervalometer back on. Hopefully you turned yours off when you were waiting for it to get dark and then just set those settings we talked about earlier. But now it's good to go and we just take our shots. Okay, and you can hear the beeping, it is running. So at 15 seconds each, 20 shots, takes about five to eight minutes. So I'm not gonna have you sit through all that. So we'll just go ahead and skip ahead. Because I wasn't the only one at the observatory, I decided to finish the rest of the video here. I didn't wanna make anybody uncomfortable. But what I ended up doing was groups of 20 images and I took a total of 100 images. I also did a few calibration frames, which were the darks and the bias. Now the darks were the exact same length as the main light exposures and the bias was just setting the shutter speed as fast as possible. If you don't know about calibration frames, check this video up here in the corner. Now I do wanna go over a couple things about this whole process with a kit lens. First off, the kit lens typically isn't the best lens you can use. The glass on it sometimes has some problems like some aberrations or some vignetting that might show up and even flats won't take care of it, but that's fine. If this is your first time and you're just getting into it, just practice anyway. You don't have to share the data with anybody. You can just learn the process. The other thing to keep in mind too is that kit lenses are generally slower than better lenses, which means even at that 15 to 17 second that you might have for an 18 millimeter lens, you're not gonna get as much light as you would with something that has an F ratio of 2.8. 
So the picture is gonna appear a little bit more dim. And the way to deal with that is to take more pictures and just merge it all together. Now, should you expect an astrophoto with a kit lens to be an award-winning picture? Probably not, unless you decide to just keep shooting and get hours and hours worth of data. But if you're just starting out, you can practice for 20 minutes doing exactly what I did in this video. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and get this image processed using Photoshop, and I'll show you a few things just to help try to bring it out just a little bit. But there we go, I hope this helped you out if you are just getting started. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.